Hey guys, welcome back. So the top three car brands driven by millionaires supposedly are Toyota, Honda, and Ford. So for those that don't know, Kirby drives a little Toyota Camry and uh, he's also got a bougie Ford. So those are the two that he drives. Uh, I didn't mean to steal your uh, steal your, your, your light, but uh, <laughs> for, uh, for me though, it's funny because I drive a Toyota and I have a Hyundai. So I was like, oh man, I'm not going to make it to a millionaire. But I used to drive a Honda. Used, used to drive a Honda. The Hyundai was actually a, a gift from my godmother before she passed. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a matter of, I think those three brands were mentioned that I believe it because I think those are reliable brands um for vehicles i think the sole purpose why millionaires want a vehicle is just reliability just have a car that is made by a maker that is known to be you know that is known to make good cars good vehicles that last and have little maintenance as possible because you just want to ride it out until it can't anymore and not have to worry about you know, expensive car parts and labor on these like foreign, you know, Mercedes and BMWs and stuff like that. So, but Kirby, what is, what are your thoughts on this? Well, Alex, I know you, I always say this, I know you ain't old enough to know this, but back in the eighties and nineties, uh, Ford, everybody used to walk around and say Ford was fixed or repaired daily. That's what Ford stood for. I heard it was found yeah. on road dead. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yep. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, there we go. So, so. I think it's, I mean, reliability, yes, but I think it's more affordability. So understand, people, people, and everybody understand this. What you see on social media and you think a millionaire is, that is not a millionaire's lifestyle. A lot of it is fluff. A lot of it is, is, you know, hypersensitive to make your emotions run about a life that somebody's really not living. Uh, of course, you got the mega, you know, you got the mega millionaires, the decas, you know, and the billionaires out there. They can do whatever the hell they want. But the average millionaire, just read the book Millionaire Next Door. The average millionaire, which is more average millionaires than it is of these ultra wealthy, you know, 10, you know, 10, 11 figure uh, network people, they don't live a life of flying private and you know got yachts and things like that or have yachts and things like that and it's more about affordability because a car the only purpose for a car no matter what level it is it's a depreciating asset that's going to go from point a to point b now if you take care of that platform that's what i'll call it you take care of that vehicle it will last longer so First off, we know it's a depreciating asset. We know it's a liability. So why don't you just go for the one that is the most affordable to do it? That's what it is. If you if you run a Ferrari into the ground, it's still going to break down early. The same way if you run a Toyota to the ground, the same way if you run a Ford into the ground, it's still going to break down early. A Honda also. But that's what I think it is. It's They realize what a vehicle is. So that's why they don't put that much capital into it. I think it's more affordability than it is reliability. I mean, of course, Toyota, I believe, is the most reliable car brand out there. And, you know, I'm 100% USA all day, but Toyota is. And the reason why I say that is because I'd have been in some of the worst parts of the world. Third world, I'm going to say fourth world countries. Where it ain't nothing. It ain't an oil chain station. It's barely a gas station. But what do you see driving around? Toyotas. Toyota Corollas, Toyota Hilux, Toyotas. I mean, it ain't the air filter ain't been changed in 40 years, but the thing's still running. <laughs> you know, there's no mechanic shops, but that's what you see. You see Toyotas. I mean, so the, the li uh, reliability factor for your Toyotas is there, but I think it's more affordability because we know it's just throwing money down the drain. So let's just get to from point A to point B, get from my house to this appointment, get from my house to this closing. Get to my house to this business deal or to the airport. And then back. That's all it is. It's not, they're not driving around saying, hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look what I'm driving. 
people with money, real people with money, want to be the most inconspicuous people out there because you see it in the news media all the time. Somebody knows somebody has money, and the next thing you know, they're getting sued. You know, lawsuits here, lawsuits there, civil complaints here, civil complaints here. Always to get the money. Always to get the money. You know, now these days, if you if you a social media, somebody in social media or somebody that's a celebrity, you get in a fist fight, you could lose a fist fight and punch somebody. Oh, I'm suing him because he created great bodily harm to me. Just because they know you have the money. I want to be able to go punch somebody in the face. And going about my life and say, hey, yeah, we just shot a fair one. That's it. But if they know you got money, oh, no. They come in. Oh, we got to have a civil complaint. We got to get lawyers involved and everything else. I mean, that's the crazy thing that happens. Uh, you know, the days of, hey, we just, you know, you have a car accident. The days of, you know, we, are, we just going to get the insurance money from them and going about our business. When they know you got money, no, we're not taking insurance money. We want to sue the person because I know they got way more money than that. So this hyper show off world that you see on social media, that's not what a normal millionaire lives like. A normal millionaire is worried about preserving their capital and knowing assets from liabilities. So they stick to keeping the cost of liabilities low and then they can go on and live their life and spend their money on trips and whatever else they want to do. But it ain't going to buy a car that's going to sit in your driveway for most of the time so everybody can drive by and say, oh, look at that guy right there. That's all social media and regular TV. That's what they've been thrown out to the people to think that's how they're supposed to live their life. And that's far from the truth of a real millionaire. Yeah, I think the average millionaire is just looking for the most afford affordability in their life so that they can have freedom in their life, not have to worry about unnecessary expenses. And like, there's always a reason to why you see people driving those luxury cars um, the like I'm talking about like the super high end luxury cars and a lot of the ones that afford them are like worth hundreds of millions and billions of dollars to them. It, and it's not even owned by them individually. It's owned by their company or whatever. And many of them use those vehicles for attention on social media to pull more attention towards their business. Like there's always a reason, a psychological reason as to why they have luxury things. It's not and it's something that majority of people like just don't understand um rather than just oh let Alex, me... i want to yeah sorry for cutting you off but i want to go a step further the people that you see flossing on social media that show off the the you know the high-end cars first off i don't think they own 90 percent of them don't even own those cars. exactly they may be leasing exactly. those cars um the other thing i think they have you know i'm because it's mostly male so they have the little male syndrome you know, it's not about them driving a the car. They get excited for how other people feel when they're driving the car. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, let's look at the let's look at the people with real money. Elon Musk don't own a damn thing. Mark Zuckerberg drive a Ford Edge. Warren Buffett, he he traded in his uh Cadillac, his uh GM Cadillac, whatever it's called. He trade that in every twelve years. That's where the real money is at. Exactly. Real money ain't doing that. So these people got way less, way less money than them. And then they sitting here walking around and acting like they're doing something. I mean, you right. just see Antonio Brown made $80 million. You know, he was driving around in Lambos and gold chains and everything. He just filed for bankruptcy. You see Takashi 5'9 driving around and all this stuff. And then now he's low on cash on the verge of file bankruptcy. Sean Kingston, just the other day, he just got pulled in for uh, fraud and bribery by the FBI. Just got uh, indicted on that. These people got less money than Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett, and Elon Musk. I mean, we can go down the line, but they not here trying to show off to make, they already know they have the money. They name alone is, right. is prescribed the money. They don't have to say, hey, look at me, because I want you to think I have money. That's what I believe. That's little man syndrome that you got. You only feel good because people that can't afford it are saying, ooh, and I. That's that's really how I look at it. So sorry, Alex, for cutting you off, but I didn't want yeah, to make no. that point. In no, you're absolutely right. I'm talking about like the ones that you vib like often see on social media that are very famous for owning cars like that. They're making revenue off of owning those cars because they know that 
those cars posted on the thumbnail are going to generate clicks and they're going to get paid for having that car. Like it's a business tactic. Um, I don't think any millionaire consciously buys a Bugatti thinking that it's a reliable car and can get them from, you know, California to New York. Like it's, it's going to burn through so much maintenance and gas requirements. So, I mean, yeah. Hell, I'm at, I'm mad at my ninety dollar oil change for my Toyota. <laughs> they changed the oil filter and now ninety dollars. I'm like, what y'all doing? Yeah. I had to go check to see. See, like, is this a bin? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, oil changes, oil changes uh, for those high end cars, like twelve hundred bucks. It's insane. Yeah, exactly. With all that being said, guys, let us know what you drive down below. Uh, don't forget to like the video, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.